All right. Welcome to our group coaching series. This is a three-part series on amplifying our influence. So this is designed for health and wellness coaches, trainers, teachers, whatever you are in the health and wellness industry. And remember, wellness encompasses a lot. So anytime we're working with someone to help change their outlook, change their mindset, whether that's, you know, they come in wanting to lose weight or get fit or, you know, do some kind of like blood lipid profile decrease to, you know, get better numbers there, anything like that, we are working with them on their wellness. So it's not just um, people working with diet and fitness only. It's anytime we're talking about mindset. So I want to kind of get that out there and let you know at the end, I'm going to, you know, give you a link to where you can uh, join, make sure you're here for part two. Um, and then at part two, I'll make sure you're here for part three. But you can also watch these kind of out of order. So if you like what's here and you know somebody that might need this information, feel free to share the link um, for them to join us live. And the benefit of being here live, for those of you catching the replay, is that we are in real time going to answer any questions. If you're not here live, I don't, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to get a hold of you um, and ask you if you have questions. I probably won't do that. But I also won't be able to communicate with you face to face and we would just be messaging back and forth. So that is a reason to be here live. We, I am a, a notes type person. So again, if you're watching this and you're not catching an audio replay, I do always when I do lives, I like to have notes for you. I like to share my screen. That's the teacher in me. So if you would like, grab something that you have close by to help you take notes. You can also, again, if you're watching this, take video of your screen or pictures of your screen. Well, it's kind of be obnoxious to have a long video, but you could take a screenshot of the slides as they come up so that you can go back and look at this. Hey, I'm giving you homework at the end. This is group coaching. This isn't just a webinar, even though it kind of feels like one probably right now. This is our group coaching, so you can go back and look at it. So let's, let's start with our presentation. Here we go. All right. And hopefully if anyone shows up in the waiting room, I'm going to open up my participant thing because I've been known before to just go on. All right. So here we are. We are talking about amplifying our influence. And this is part one of three. The, this part that we're talking about right now is our pivotal steps to unlocking success. So we're talking about the very beginning here. What are we doing um, at, in the moment when we are actually starting our business? Or if we're at a place where we've kind of peaked and we want to keep it going, how is that working for us? How are we working now to unlock things that we need to be successful? So some of this stuff in here, you might say, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. But there's going to be at least one place where you will see a room for improvement if, if you feel at all this feeling of, oh my gosh, I could do more, or I could, I could have more, or I want more, or there needs to be more. If you're feeling like that, then you're going to find something in here for you. And of course, if you're just getting started, you are. Um, so our agenda today is to talk about um, this, this coaching overview. And I kind of touched on that a little bit. We are going to work together for three weeks. And in the three weeks, we're going to be working on um, kind of the pre or things that need to be in place. In the second part, we're going to look at what our actual coaching is doing. So you're going to see in our second part <clears throat> that we're really going to hone in more on the concept of health and wellness. So you're going to be getting some specific strategies to work with a health and wellness client, not just strategies in general. So next week, it's not going to be all the pre-work. It's going to be, what do I do? And a lot of talking about, well, if my client you know, is here, what can I do here? And how can I keep the scope on something that's sustainable? And then, of course, our last week is going to be talking about growth and management. How can we keep it going? And we are going to touch on that already today, how to make our business sustainable. Our focus is health and wellness. And that's because that is who I serve. That is who I serve. I serve people, I serve coaches, I serve trainers who work with clients somewhere in the health and wellness industry. Um, I work with life coaches. I work with health coaches. I work with personal trainers. 
I'm trying to think. Let's just go through my little client list in my head. I have um, oh, a Pilates instructor, very highly certified Pilates instructor who has her own Pilates business. Um, there is one that is working at a university. And I think I've kind of covered it all with the coaches, the trainers, the life coaches, uh, but a, a lot of different niches, but everyone works one-on-one -on -one with somebody in order to get to the next space. And usually this person also incorporates things like physical health. They come from the physical health component, right? The eating, the working out, the sleeping and the stress management. We know that those four things fall into the physical health profile. So if you work with a client on one or more of those four things, that's, that is who I work with. I work with you. I work with the person who's working with the people. That's me. So that's why I focus in on health and wellness. Can these be applied outside of it? Yes. But my examples, all of that is going to be specific to the health and wellness industry. Today, our focus is going to be the top three questions that you should be asking yourself. And there will be some questions within questions. <laughs> So again, get something to write with or take a screenshot and come back to this later because I want this to be a place for you to do some real work. So as your coach today, what I want to know and what I want you to dive into a little bit, my personal question to you is, what is your answer to the questions that we go through? What is your answer to each of these situations? So you can be thinking about that. Again, if you are here live, and I'll probably say this little disclaimer a couple times, we are recording. So just be aware of that. And we can always edit stuff out if you want to say, I don't want this one. It'll be on the, the video recording, but if you want me to edit out of audio, I could. Uh, but just know that we are recording. Um, just be aware of that. <laughs> That's unlike a lot of, I will say, in a lot of my group coaching, we don't ever send out mass recording. So if you were a client of mine, we wouldn't be sending this recording out to a bunch of people. We would keep it within our, our group and probably watch it, but we don't send it out to you know anyone that RSVPs. There's a lot of people here that RSVP, or a lot of people that RSVP that are not here. So here's question number one, you guys. Are you moving towards success in all dimensions? And now if you have seen this, if you're like me, sometimes I feel like people have seen this over and over and over and over again because I have been teaching this over and over and over again, but that's a good sign. Anything that I teach, the dimensions of wellness, right? Anything that I teach over and over again since I've started, I mean, even at the collegiate level, I've been teaching about dimensions of wellness since I, before I was hired as full-time faculty, which that was in 2009. And it, it's been a while, right? So let's say as full-time faculty starting in 2009, I started teaching dimensions of wellness. And to be honest, it hasn't changed a whole ton. And all it says is if you are wanting any kind of success anywhere, you need to be aware of all of these components. And some people teach it in six, some people in four, some people in eight. I think that's about the max. But um, SAMHSA, the you know American kind of mental health agency standard, that's not what it stands for, no standard, but they hold a lot of the mental health standards, as Sam said. They identified eight dimensions of wellness, and these are the eight dimensions of wellness that they identified. They identified um, your, I'll show you if you're watching a little bit better definition, they identified your emotional wellness, which is how are you coping in life? I like to chunk quite a bit of our, what we would consider mental health into this category. Um, how, how is it going? How's your day to day and how are your relationships all kind of fall into this category? So are we paying attention to that? Right. If one of these areas is lacking, they will all be lacking a little bit. The next one is, um, our financial wellness, right? Not, and not, do we have enough money? I, a lot of people kind of lump that together. It's what are, how are we looking at our money? Right, because we could be, we have a, a billion dollars and then have expenses that are $2 billion and be poorer than the person who's maybe not making a ton of money, but all their expenses are being met and then some, and they've got some fun money. So it's not really how much money we have, 
It's how, how is our situation? What are our plans for the future here financially? And do we feel satisfied there? And you can feel satisfied and, and be completely broke and you can be completely satisfied there. So it's how are, how are we in that dimension? Do we want to look at it or we just close the door on it? Um, social, what is our support system like? This is where, um, you know, when we went through COVID, a lot of this came out was um, the weak social link. And so we saw other people kind of suffering because of that one weak link. Um, spiritual, a sense of purpose and meaning in life. Occupational, what are we doing for work? Physical, we talked about that one already. Activity, diet. Um, I don't know why they do diet and nutrition together, but it's sleep and stress management also falls in that category. And then intellectual, like how are we challenging ourselves? And is it, or do we have also an intellectual, I would make an argument for creativity falling into this place. And are we giving ourselves an outlet to be both creative and challenged, right? So you may have seen this before and you might think, oh gosh, yes, of course, I know about all of these, but look at it in terms of if you are being held back anywhere, is something in here being ignored? Because typically, if we are feeling something really strong, like we're feeling the physical really strong, I think we can all identify this. We really need to change in the physical. We put all of our effort there, sometimes forgetting that, you know, maybe our support system isn't in that new place. And that is suffering, suffering. We're like, why is it so hard? Not that we can't achieve, but why is it so hard? Why do I feel like I am up against a wall every time? I try to do anything with my business because that's only one occupational is one tier. Some simple things that fall into that occupational are things like intellectual. Are you both challenged and creative? Right? Challenge might be the stuff that, you know, I, I challenge myself in a lot of ways when it comes to things like building email lists, building out websites, that kind of stuff. It didn't come naturally to me. And it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people in this industry and in health and wellness. We're not the ones that people are coming to like, help me build a website. So when we're having to do some of that stuff ourselves, it's easy to let that intellectual wellness actually kind of fall down. We're like, well, I'll get to it when my business picks up. And we realize, well, you know what? Actually, <laughs> my business isn't going to pick up until I challenge that piece. So just look through this on your own, maybe snap a picture of it and say, okay, what, where is it that I'm not spending energy that is taking something from my occupational wellness, my emotions, my finances, my social connections, my spirituality, my occupation, my physical health, my intellectual health. And that's, that's the first question. And that's the first thing we do. In fact, whenever I work with a group of new clients, and this is in, in my course that I've created is this is like ground groundwork because they come to me wanting changes in their health and their physical, whatever the physical is. And sometimes they don't realize that they've been striving so hard here that other places are actually sucking out of that. And it's so hard. It's so hard that when we deal with the rest of it, it becomes a lot easier. And this might be a tool that you're going to take right now and say, oh, you know what? I probably should figure out how to assess my clients. I do it um, as a, a wheel and we have a scale and they have a little chart that they can fill in and they can reprint it and fill it out again. It's all part of um, the MIMO method, which is my health course. But this is the groundwork. This is number one. If you've never done this for yourself before, that's where you go. So that's question number one. You feel free, throw your hand up if you're here live and you have any questions. I'd love to you know, chit chat about it as we go. This is not just a lecture. Um, this is group coaching for a reason. So remember your job is to kind of ask yourself the hard questions within this. Now here's question number two. That you need to ask yourself, do you truly want success for other people? And I think on the surface, we would all say what we're supposed to say. I always call it the Sunday school answer. Yeah, of course. Of course I do. There's a piece of the pie for everybody. Um, one of the mottos of the women entrepreneur group that I'm part of is you can sit with us. 
which is a super cool concept. But occasionally, like, there's some things that we get held up on. So do you truly want success for others? Here's what you're going to find out about yourself just in a second. I do, but are you doing any of this? Let me know. Let me know if you're doing some of this stuff. I do, but I overemphasize competition. And the question you can ask yourself for some self-assessment here, right? Ask yourself the hard questions is, do I view others in my industry solely as competitors? Or am I open to collaboration and learning from them? So that would mean when you see people in your industry, like on social media or in person or wherever you're seeing them, what comes up first? Jealousy. Something that I notice when, when the jealousy comes up in me, I'm slow to identify it as jealousy, but I'll identify it first and like, they're not doing it right. Well, then why, why are they so successful? <laughs> and they still might not be doing it like right as far as me as, you know, someone who loves exercise physiology, but they're doing something right. So what can I learn from them? This is the, I can get there too attitude. It's not just that, that you can do it, that they can do it, that there's a piece of pie for everybody. It's that there's, there is an entire pie for everybody. We can get there too, but that doesn't mean that we shut off everything and do it our way. How can you collaborate? How can you learn from them? Maybe, and this is, this is what has been my biggest challenge is what are they offering? What can I, what can I get into that they are offering? What can I learn from? I, my, I'm, I'm just being very real with you guys and you'll see why in a minute. But one of the things that I really catch myself with having been in the fitness industry for as long as I have been, it's like my first love is when I see people who I mentored, um, killing it, they're killing it. Right. Like, I mean, they are just like huge national following. And I'm like, my goodness, like, I helped you learn how to teach. And on the outside, I'm looking at myself saying, what a compliment to you as a mentor. But I'll tell you what happens inside is, oh my gosh, why, why are they doing, I'm better than them. I'm their mentor. I'm better than them. That should be me. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But what can I learn from them? Maybe I need to see what they're using for their email provider. Maybe I need to go to one of their, you know, webinars or one of their trainings. And I tell you what, guys, when I do, and I have many times, it's not just in the fitness industry. When I go to one of their trainings, I look and I say, oh, wow, that's what I'm missing. That's what I'm missing. It's that tiny little piece. One time, friends, it was as simple as a, a flipping Bluetooth microphone for my YouTube workouts. And I still haven't perfected that whole system, but I'm getting there. <laughs> but it was something where I was like, you know, there, the, my sound just isn't as crisp. Well, that's an easy fix. But I wouldn't have known if I didn't go and look at what they were doing and what their workouts looked like and sounded like. So what can, how can you learn from people in your industry too? How can you collaborate with them, right? Well, I really want success for everyone. I do, but I compare apples to oranges. I'm looking at my business and comparing it directly with another business. And I'm not considering any of the differences, right? I'm not considering, are, are they further along in their business? Have they been around for a while? Um, is there, do they have more time? My friends with littles, I see um, my friend Jackie here as a picture. I know she's got a little boy. My friends with littles, time is a different world for us. I wouldn't be able to do this right now without my mom helping me. Again, I'm like very transparent with you right now. I wouldn't be able to do this. I might be in my 40s. I still wouldn't ask my mom for permission. <laughs> hey, can you watch my daughter? Because I need to do this thing. I need to bring this coaching up. So it, it, there's all, I have that resource. I have my mom here. You might not have that right now. And guess what? That's okay. 
the time will come, the resources will come, but what resources do you have that they don't have? Apples to oranges, they're both fruit. One's not going to be better than another. Like look, one might be more acidic, one might be higher in fiber, but they're different. They bring different things to the table. So what, what are you bringing to the table that you're not considering when you're just looking at their resources and potentially their experience? This kind of goes back into the overemphasizing competition, right? What can we learn from them? Yeah, I see Jackie says, these are really good to think about. They are, they're things that we don't naturally think about because we get caught up in our own thinking. We get caught up up here and these, yes, resources, Heather, are huge, absolutely. Um, the third one, is yes, definitely. I, you know, I want success for others, but I ignore my own personal growth. Friends, if you don't hear anything I say today, right? If you don't hear anything I say today, this is what you need when you are at the ground floor of anything. And I don't mean you're starting. Some of us are not starting our business, but some of us are waiting for a shift in business, right? We're wanting to take the next step. Every step has a new starting point. You may have been in this business 50 years, but every step that you decide to go through has a new starting point. So am I fo too focused on the external markers of success? Right? And in this, I would almost say the next thing. Am I too focused on the next thing? Growing my follower account, making more revenue. There's a lot more of the next things. And not paying enough attention to my own personal growth, growth and development. I highly recommend picking a time, maybe every quarter, maybe at least every year to just make a list. It doesn't need to go on the wall. It doesn't need to be in a particular form. It can be on the back of an envelope. I'm anybody else the queen of writing on the back of envelopes. This is just, if I see a blank envelope, I guarantee that give me five minutes. I'm going to have a grocery list on that thing. I think I've written on the front of this one I have without flashing my address everywhere. Okay, Gretchen, get yourself together. Um, but write down everything that you have done in that time. You will shock yourself. You will shock yourself. I can remember the year that I finally got my act together and got my, my online course up and running um, and my website. That same year, I got the email, I got this, that, the other. When I wrote all that down, I was like so proud of myself. I was so proud of myself. I maybe got 10 more followers on Instagram, <laughs> right? But who cares? Look at all this other stuff. And my growth is so much better. I will say, I, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen it. Like I disappear every now and then. You know what never changes though, is my response rate to my emails, my click throughs on my emails, because I know where, you know, where my energy is most used. So if you're going to focus on external markers, do it based on your own success, not what people are deeming as success. Have you ever done this before? I'd love to know from you guys. You can put it in the chat. You can say it out loud. I am recording, but just, you know, bear that in mind. Have you ever done any of that before where you focus on what's happening? Maybe once a quarter, maybe once a year, maybe never. Yes. Gain versus gap. Absolutely. Yes. Jamie. Yes. You've done it. Perfect. I've got one more for you. I do, but I'm neglecting, why oh, I spelled that funky. If you're watching this, my apologies. I neglect my authenticity. So there's a reason that I have this picture up. And if you're not watching it live, let me tell you what it looks like. Um, or if you're just getting the audio, it is me and I'm dressed in a Western costume. You can barely tell because it's just my face. And I have a mustache tape to my face. Because this is at my beach retreat this past year. Every year um, I open a beach retreat. Anyone can go, but you're guaranteed a spot if you're in my um, coaching and mastermind group. But I had to stop and ask myself some of these questions. Like it is giving Mario vibes, isn't it? Very much, very much giving Mario vibes. Am I being the most genuine I can be? And am I being transparent about myself and my experience? Or am I presenting like a polished facade? It is not a bad thing to present a polished facade. Like, you know, in some instances, we want to be professional. But things like beach retreat, I want people to get to know the real me. 
I want to find my people. I want to find the people who, yeah, read the room. I want to find people who, who really resonate with me. And part of the reason why is because this will give your business longevity. This will give the, this is why I'll show up with my hair all crazy on Instagram. This is why I don't always pick the most flattering angles of myself and all my pictures, because I want you to know that that's what you're really getting. That is what you're actually getting. And if you are the kind of person that wants that perfectly polished look, there are people out there that want that too and give you that. So at, you know, we did a little uh, murder mystery dinner at the beach retreat and I just brought all my weirdness. Um, this was after my original character was the one who was murdered and pulled out of the room. I came back around. I ran in the rain around the house and taped a mustache to my face and became another character. So that's just my weirdness. That's just who I am. That's it was fun for us at the time. We laughed super hard and I had the most amazing time. Um, as I don't want to speak for everyone else, but it seemed like everyone had a pretty good time at the beach retreat. Um, and part of that was just, I was being authentically me, authentically me. And so are you, is there a place where you can bring a little bit more authenticity and quit waiting for perfection? Social media is a good, a good one to bring up here because a lot of times we wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until everything is like 100%. And then we finally put everything up, right? And by then everyone is like, done it. And so we're feeling, we're feeling behind and it's okay to say here, probably because we are behind, but not because we're just behind in general, but because we're waiting, we're waiting for perfection. So that second question, again, feel free, pop up, ask a question, speak out loud if you need to throw something in the chat. This is our last of the three questions that we're asking ourselves today on this bottom level. Again, we next week, we've got another, our next level and then our third level. Is our approach to coaching sustainable? Is this where the true key to our success is? It shouldn't feel like a revolving door. The only time really like in a health and wellness industry that it might feel like a revolving door is if you have like an assessment job or a sales job. And that's it. Like you're not involved in actually keeping the clients or meeting with the clients. But if you're just doing assessment or you're just doing sales, then you probably aren't, you probably will never feel like it's sustainable because that's not in the job description. But if you are a coach, you should feel like you could do this forever with you are growing a client base that will stay with you. You are not just getting people to a level and then pushing them away. Because as we saw back in that very first slide, there's a lot that goes into it. And there is never a point in time where we are perfectly, you know, 10 out of 10 in all eight dimensions. It's just not what happens. It's just not life. Life isn't perfect. So why are we, you know, assuming that we're going to be at some point, but we should be able to be more of a partner to our clients. Instead of being, you know, here and here, and I'm just going to stay here until you get past me and then I'm done. If we can come alongside them and it doesn't matter where they go, they have us to bounce off of, that is sustainable. That is sustainable. This is an attitude thing. This is a mindset thing. If your mindset is that of, I'm here, and you can, you can get to my point someday is here, right? You, they're going to pass you up. They're going to bypass you inevitably. That's just what's going to happen. So you've got to have that side-by-side -side approach. And I apologize if you're just listening to the audio on replay because I was using my hands a lot just then. <laughs> so basically you want to be side-by-side -side with your clients, not holding them up to a coaching standard or having an end goal for them. This is a bit of an aside, but I teach this all the time. Um, you should be creating vision, not helping them set goals. So, let's see, I have a question. Sustainable and continued relationship, ability to continue serving. Yes, 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 Heather. That kind of sustainable to keep the relationship. Let me move forward to the slide. I'll explain it a little bit more. 
here, but you know, we should be able to, this is like my, I ha, I'm that like creative vision board person. I'm sorry if you like to have all your exact numbers and stuff, but I, I love ha creating vision in my clients because it's giving them something that they're aiming for. And we can shift and change that vision at all times to keep them progressing. If our clients are getting better and better, we are going to get better and better. If you've ever um, been around a bunch of coaches and you hear that one coach that's like, I don't think I'm there yet. So I sent them to this other coach. That coach is probably the, the person that's holding themselves at one spot. And that's not always the case. There could be some real stuff going on. Like, I don't necessarily want to do marriage coaching or, you know, there's certain things that I don't want to do. Just, it's not my passion. So I would send them to someone else. That's just what I would do, but not because I don't think we can't have a relationship. I just help the wellness is my thing. Yes. Heather scope plays a huge part. Did I not, I, there was something I was writing down about scope. It's so funny. Oh, oh, that's next week. I have something about scope. I want to talk to you about next week. It's a good one. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, all right. So here we go. How, how do you match up then? Like, what do you think about these things, right? So the number one is, do you have long-term clients? And maybe you feel like you feel a friend-ish or a relationship with your clients, right? You're, you feel close to your clients. Um, this does not mean you are their friend all the time. I One of my mentors way back in the day used to say, I might be friendly, but I'm not your friend. We, we were teaching children at the time. It was at a camp. Um, and, you know, what we wanted to say basically was like, I'm going to hold you accountable for your actions, but I'm going to be nice. So you have a, you have long-term clients. You don't have a revolving door of clients. You have people that have been there for a while. Um, I, this is one of the reasons that I like having my annual coaching program where you only pay once or, I mean, you might payment plan it. I have people that done that, but you have, you pay one time and it's a year, it's a full year. It's not. And then in four months, we, we try to, you know, you pay more Then in four more months. I'm going to end up not being able to add to 12 here in a minute, but right. We, it's a full year of coaching. And when you get into that, every time I have a client that takes that leap, then we have, we do have a better relationship. We have a closer relationship because I get to know them so well. And usually they stay involved with it, whether they move into being a private client or they stay in the annual coaching program, or maybe they just come to the beach retreat the next year, right? I see them again. They are a long-term client because I've taken the time to come alongside them. Yeah. Oh, no worries. If you have to go, I'm sitting out the recording. No worries. Um, the next thing, now this is specific to health coaching here, is do you understand that health trends are cyclical? Again, another little spelling error there if you're watching. Health trends are cyclical, but coaching should not be. Right? You might, and this gets weird. This is why I put in parentheses, but marketing can be trendy. Because people are looking for trends. Almost always they are looking for the next biggest thing. So you might have to start off with, yes, I can help you lose weight. Yes, I can help you find out if the ketogenic diet is going to be the best thing for you. That has to do with scope too, Heather, right? Like if we're not trained to, um, as a dietitian or nutritionist, especially registered dietitian, we don't need to be talking about that kind of stuff. But if we are, if you are, I do actually have a client that's a dietitian. If we're a dietitian, then maybe this is something that we do talk about. Come find out more about the keto diet. Come find more about intermittent fasting. Um, come find out more about, um, carb cycling, right? All of that stuff. Maybe we're using that to help people realize that we can help them with what their bigger goal is. We're not teasing them. We're not confusing them. We're not getting them there and then saying, ha ha, I'm not really going to talk about this at all. Right. But we bring them in and we say, okay, what you're seeing is the outcome of this common thing. Whatever it is, I know I, what I always teach on when people come into the MIMO method 
when people get interested in body freedom, anyone who's coming to me for some kind of health issue, the very first thing we do, we do dimensions of wellness. And then I show them that it's the mindset around it. And we do, I, I almost always, I do four weeks. I have a chunk of four weeks of curriculum that I do with someone before we even touch diet. I might give them some exercises they can do, but before I even hold them accountable for all of that, they go through four weeks of this. It doesn't matter what's trending. So are you making sure that you do not stray and you aren't being shifted and changed based on trends? That's the big takeaway here. Are you letting trends change your business? Are you letting trends change the way that you market? Because that's a big one. That's a really big one. And then the last one here is, um, are we seeking continued education and not a different path? This kind of goes along with it. Because what I what happens is some people go, okay, well, I shouldn't fall into trends. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go to like all the trainings. I'm not going to do all the things. I'm just going to stick with what I know. That's not what I'm saying. Pick what you know and then dive deeper into it. This is why I'm a huge fan of um, the more like advanced certifications that I have because almost all of them require continuing education. So I know anyone else that has them has at least taken like four hours of courses in the past year on what we're doing in the industry as a whole right now. There are some definitely some like flaws to, to having so many certifications all the time and all these different things, because that can turn into a different path, right? Getting so niche down, it can turn into a different path. Um, but we're diving deep into what we know. We're sticking with health and wellness. I, I will give you my example. Again, I want to show you what I've done before so you don't do it. At one point, um, I had a group of people who was kind of relying on me to help them with social media stuff. And so I created a, a membership portal, um, videos. I was spending like several hours a week teaching social media. and that was not, that was not sustainable. That was not something that I was willing to do long-term. It wasn't something that I loved. I was going to have to cook. I was going to have to change the continuing education path that I was on completely. But then I came back and said, no, I do health and wellness. And even most, more specifically, I coach coaches. I help coaches that are doing health and wellness. Because that's what I've been almost my whole life. I've either been a, I've been a personal trainer. I've been a group fitness instructor. Those things that technically I still am on paper, right? I've been a training officer. I've been a college professor. I'm doing that still. I've been a life coach. I'm doing that still. I've been education director. I still in part do some of that. I've been a fitness grad assistant, but everything has been on that same path. I've just been able to dive in to education a little bit more here. That's a lot, right? I hope you're, you're thinking, oh my gosh, okay, there's definitely some places that I can get some self-assessment. So here's your homework, right? Here's your homework. Go through these three questions for yourself. And I do want to open it up and I do want to chat. We can especially do it here at the end. But this is your homework. I want you to dive deep in these three questions and ask yourself, number one, are you moving towards success in all dimensions? Look at them all. Where, what is potentially needing a little bit more balance, which is why I have the, if you're watching this, have the picture of the rocks. Um, number two, do you truly want success for others? Or are there areas where maybe you were inadvertently not, not being as truthful with yourself? And then the third one is, is your approach to coaching sustainable? Going back to our areas. And this was, I, I threw this one in here just because this was, these are kind of uh, people that are, are there with me, kind of life free right now. They come to my beach retreat. Um, this is my group, right? They're, they're my friends. Yeah, they're my clients. They're my friends and we have fun together. And it's a very sustainable coaching environment because we are all, I'm coming alongside them on their path. And they're not all the same path. They're not all the same path. 
but they are paths. So that's your goal. Your goal is we didn't take up all of our time this week, and but I'm going to open it up for talking because that was kind of my goal. I was hoping I get a little bit more of that. So I gave you plenty of time, um, but this is our homework. And I want you to think about this because I am going to ask you next week, like, what do we find out? Let's do a little wrap up right here. All right. Um, so let's, I want to open it up for questions or comments or talking, anything that you want to bring up. If you need to register for next week, go ahead and scan the QR code here um, on the screen. Yes, lots to dwell on and journal through. And then if you want to learn more about um, that elite coaching that I do, the, the annual program I talked about, you can look through here. And I will say the Body Freedom program that is enrolling in September um, you can get that separately, but you can also get it as part of this. So if you have any interest in the body freedom program, like bringing this information to your clients, that continuing education we talked about, uh, let me know. You can contact me. I'll go back to the other screen. You can contact me via Instagram. It's probably the best way to message me. Uh, my email is Gretchen at Gretchen gag. So dot com. So you can do that too. You can also message me on Instagram at Gretchen Gag because I see that that's kind of my social media platform of choice. The one that I know I'll see a lot and ask me more about this. If you go to um, the link linked here, which is also uh, GretchenGag.com slash annual coaching, you can also schedule a call and it doesn't have to be specifically for this. It might just be you wants to chat through one on one some of the information that we've done here. Um, as someone who's registered for this, I will absolutely take a call with you. So you can schedule your call on that as well. So if you want to do a little chit chat about something here and where to go next. Um, but that's it as far as what we have going on. And I really, really, really hope to see you back next week because we're going to be talking about um, embracing body freedom and thriving. So how how does health coaching look? in real time, different. If we're doing all these things, if we're creating a sustainable business, if we have our clients that are, um, that are creating success for us and we're like wanting that success for other people, what is this going to look like in real time when we get our clients? So friends, if we don't have any questions, that is what I have for you. I hope it was something that you found that you haven't really stopped and focused in on in a while. Um, if, if this feels like something that you're used to doing, come check it out next week because we're going to be talking about what we can do with our clients one-on-one uh, -on -one and how we can use some of this information to just up our, our coaching game a little bit. That's all I got. So until next week, I'll see you guys later. I'll stick around and take, in case you have questions.